Good morning, thanks very much for joining me. Today I thought I would talk to you a little bit about my career on board cruise ships. Um, I've touched upon this a couple of times in the past and a lot of you have said that you'd be interested to know a little bit more about it so I thought I'd probably do it in a two-part sort of mini-series if you like. Um, and I'm going to talk about the travel and the places that I went to in the second part and life on board ship and what I did and so on in today's part. So I will intersperse it with some photographs as well so hopefully you won't get too bored of looking at my face. <laughs> So I worked for a company called P&O Cruises, very well known in the cruise industry still today. I think they're now owned by Carnival, but at the time they were an independent company and they had a subsidiary called Princess Cruises, which was the American based side of the operation P&O um, tended to sail out of Southampton and on this side of the world and um, the princess ships were in America and elsewhere. Um, I started in 1989 and I finished in 1994 and during that time I worked on board four different ships. The first one was the SS Canberra which when you look at photos of it now looks like an old fashioned ship. It was coming towards the end of its life when I was on it. Um, anyway she'd been down to the Falklands the Canberra as a R and R ship and a supply ship and um had had quite a long and illustrious seagoing career and was quite a well-known famous much beloved ship she was the um, queen of the P&O fleet it was lovely to work on board her I'm, I, when I look back at my career I'm so glad that I did get the chance to work on board Canberra um, so she was my first ship I did two contracts on board her and then I was moved to Princess Cruises and I did three contracts on board the Island Princess which was my second ship. Um, um, she was a lovely ship. If anybody ever watched the series The Love Boat that was filmed on board her and Pacific Princess which was her sister ship. Um, and I think out of all the ships I worked on Island Princess was probably my favourite. I had my best times on board the IP as we called her. They, they were all, everything in seagoing terms is n known by a different word or an acronym. Everything is very short and <laughs> took a long time to get to grips with everything when I first started. But Island Princess was a much smaller ship and by today's standards incredibly small. I don't think there's well, very very few cruise ships in the world the size she was. It was 600 passengers on board her and 350 crew I think it was I think I'm right in saying 350 crew um but yeah very very small I've moved from there after three contracts on there and I really didn't want to leave um I was moved to a ship called the Dawn Princess which again was an older prince uh, an older ship um uh, again a ship that was coming towards the end of its life at the, with P Princess Cruises at the time and um, it certainly felt like an older ship and um, I did one contract on board her and then for my final two contracts with Princess Cruises I moved to the Sky Princess which was a much more modern ship it's much um, bigger than the the others that I've worked on other than the Canberra and um, at the time it felt quite quite a modern change from the ones that I've been on but um, yeah Sky Princess my ship as well so those were the four ships I worked on. Um, my rank I, um, was, when I started I did two contracts as a junior assistant purser and I was then promoted from there to assistant purser. Um, that what that meant in effect um junior assistant purses were contract jobs so i used to do uh when i when i had that job it was a six month contract on board the ship then you would come home for two and a half months approximately two two and a half months and um but you wouldn't be paid your contract was only for the time you were on the ship when i was promoted i then became a fully fledged if you like member of the merchant navy an officer in the merchant navy and once i was an assistant purser i think i showed you in a vlog the other week my um, merchant navy discharge book which had all my ships and tours of duty and information in it and um 
then I would do four month contracts which was much nicer I don't think they're that short now I'm pretty sure they're considerably longer from what I'm I know from people who still work on the ships um, but yeah four months on board and then two and a half months at home all paid so that was lovely and the other nice thing about it of course and um, I don't know if it's the same rule now but in those days if you were out of the country more than 180 overnights in a year you didn't pay any tax at all um, in the UK um, so that was really nice that was a, a little bit of an added bonus the pay wasn't exceptional but bearing in mind it was tax free because I was out of the country way more than 180 nights a year um, yeah bearing in mind it was um, tax free and also of course during the time you're on board you have no expenses you, you're living on board your food is included um, the only thing that you your laundry's done for you the only thing that as an that I had to pay for really was entertainment and anything I wanted to buy you know shopping um but yeah that your living expenses on board a cruise ship are absolutely minimal so in terms of actual value of salary it was great while I was um working on board the ships when I first I'd moved back home before I went to work on the ships um just because it wasn't worth, I was renting a house down in, down here in Devon, um, or a flat down here in Devon, and um, obviously it wasn't worth keeping that on when I was going to work in ship, so I moved back to my parents' house in Dorset. Um, and then when I'd been at sea about a year and a half, I was able to buy my first flat in 1991, which I still own now, actually. I still got it, it's rented out now. But um, yeah, that was one of the main things that being at sea enabled me to do financially, which was absolutely great. It got me on the property ladder, which was brilliant. So when I first started, as I said, I was on the Canberra and um, the Canberra sailed out of Southampton. Uh, which was nice. Southampton was only 30 miles approximately away from where my parents lived so it was easy for them to take me to the tr the ship for my first contract and uh, pick me up when I finished my contract and that was all very convenient. When I moved on to the other ships later on, uh, just while I'm talking about the Canberra as well, when I very first joined her she was in refit um, which is a period of time without passengers on board um, for refurbishment for the ships um, sometimes they do them in the water in Southampton or sometimes they go to somewhere where they are able to go into a dry dock so they can work on the underneath bit of the ship if they need to get to the bottom of it you know um, we did a dry dock once in Bremerhaven in Germany which was great fun because obviously not having any passengers on the ship is it's a double-edged sword actually because when you don't have any passengers on the ship obviously your work is minimized and I'll come back to talking about work in a bit but um yeah, the work is minimised but then you've got really awful um, like there's no heating or air conditioning or anything because they tend to be working on all that sort of thing that they can't turn off when the passengers are on board the plumbing is horrendous so that's that you don't have to wear your, your full uniform though we were able to wear bo boiler suits and um, merchant navy jumpers which was quite fun <laughs> on the days that we were in refit I used to enjoy not having to wear proper uniform when I moved to, sorry, I've just stopped and restarted the camera and I've got it at a different angle, I think. Um, when I moved onto the princess ships, in, they would be sailing out of different ports. So I would, tend, I would fly out to join the ship and um, I flew out and back from various different places. The very first time I flew out to join a ship, I flew to Trinidad. Um, and then I think I flew back from... Alaska, Whittier once, and Vancouver, Sydney. And one of the bonuses of being flown out, obviously your, your flight was paid for by the company, and uh, one of the bonuses of being flown out to your location to join the ship or being flown back from a location overseas to come back from the ship is that you're able to have local leave and so you could arrange it or ask for your flight to be arranged a few days before you joined the ship or after you left the ship and you could stay um, and have a little holiday if you like. Um, I never had a local leave, I never did local leave on the way out to join the ship um, but I did a couple of times after leaving the ship once in Los Angeles. I left in Los Angeles and I had a friend out there at the time who was living out there working as a nurse, an old friend from home 
and uh, I spent a few days with her and had a really nice time that was great and that was an added little bonus holiday that I was able to tack on to the end of my trip and not have to pay for the flight and then again I did it in um, Vancouver one year um, with some other friends from the ship who were leaving on the same day as me and we had three or four nights in Vancouver um, just chilling out after we'd finished our busy contract and that was really nice as well. So that was a little added bonus at the time. Again, I don't know if they still do that or not. Uniform wise, we always had to wear uniform. God, I got sick of that uniform. Um, I had three different uniforms. Um, in cold weather climates, you would wear um, a black skirt, white shirt, black tie, and we had a black jacket, but we put on a black jacket. Also had a hat, I think I've got a photo of me in my hat somewhere, um, which we had to wear if we had dignitaries coming onto the ship or every time you left the ship in your uniform going ashore um, for whatever reason, whether you were going out on the dockside to talk to the ship's agent or if you were going into the passenger terminal to um, when people were getting on board or off the ship, for, you had to have your hat on. You could get into big trouble if you didn't have your hat on. Um, so yeah, that was our um, cold weather uniform. And then we had, which was white skirt, white double-breasted short sleeve shirt with um, buttons. I thought I still had my buttons, but I haven't got them. Um, they were threaded through on little gold hooks, gold buttons with little anchors on. And um, yeah, they were quite fiddly actually. <laughs> but yeah, it was quite a nice smart uniform. I, whites was my favorite uniform. Um, then in the evenings when we went, um, to dinner or out to the public rooms on the ship we had access to all the public rooms as officers which was nice and uh, that's where we did a lot of our socializing um we, we would wear an outfit that we all hated long full-length black skirts a polyester blouse with pleats down the front and cufflinks and um a black You'll see the picture anyway, a black necktie thing, which looking back, I'm sure did look very smart, but oh, how we hated those skirts. They were no good for dancing in the disco, and we did a lot of dancing in the ship's disco in those days. So let's talk about work a little bit. I um, had, seven, as I said, my rank was an assistant purser, junior assistant purser, and then assistant purser. And... Um, my work, my actual job on board was various. Um, an assistant person could hold various different jobs. And um, I started off working on reception. Um, just It's just like a hotel reception on board a ship. I'm sure, sure a lot of you have been on board cruise lines and gliners and um, seen the reception desk and foreign exchange, because obviously people, but my very first trip on the, my first contract on the Canberra, I joined just before Christmas and we did a two week Christmas cruise, Christmas and New Year cruise down to um, the Med. I went, went to Tenerife and Gibraltar were two of the places on that very first cruise. Then we came back to Southampton and we set off on the annual three-month world cruise, um, which went on from January to April. And I, I was really lucky, actually. I got my the, did the world cruise on my very first contract. Um, not a lot of people get to do a well, a lot of people do get to do a world cruise, but the, it was sort of the thing that everybody wanted to do. It was a, it was a nice way to start my career. If you so obviously, sorry, I'm go, circling back to the point I was originally making that you need a foreign exchange desk on board the ship because people are going ashore in all these different ports all around the world and they want to exchange their money. So we used to have all sorts of different currencies going on. Um, and I worked on the foreign exchange desk for a while. Another job that I held on board, which I really enjoyed actually, this was one of my favorites, was um, crew AP, assistant purser. Um, and that is basically running the human resources side of shipboard life on board the ship. Um, you, we had, I think, something along the lines of 15 or 16 different nationalities. Um, of crew members from all over the world, all on different contracts. Some of them got paid on board. I used to have to pay some of them. Um, they had to sign all the ship's papers when they arrived on board. It was a very paperwork heavy job, but I really enjoyed it. I liked liaising with all the different nationalities. And it was quite an autonomous job as well. When you did that, you were sort of left to your own devices to do your thing. And um, I quite liked that. I've always been 
more someone who enjoys working by myself than in a team. Although teamwork has its merits, I feel like I do better working by myself. Um, then from there I moved on in two, on two different ships I had this job which was captain secretary and that is a very good job in terms of time off. Um, the other jobs as an assistant purse you don't get as much time off in port um, as you do as captain secretary. It was a, a nice little cushy number, I really enjoyed that job and it was very much one where I could please myself again a little bit, even more so I would say than the crew AP job but um, yeah I enjoyed being the captain secretary, that was a nice job. So a question that a lot of people ask and are interested in is what our accommodation was like on board and I was actually very lucky, I never had to share a cabin. This was more by luck than anything else to start with because as a junior assistant person you would generally have to share a cabin but the girl that I started with who was also a junior assistant person decided that it wasn't for her after the very first two week cruise and um, left so they, they didn't have a chance to replace her straight away so we set off on the world cruise one person down and um, so I had my own cabin, whereas I should have been sharing with her. And I can't remember exactly how it worked out, but by the time they flew someone out to replace her, there was a spare cabin, so I never had to share a cabin. On the Canberra, we had a little corridor of rooms, um, I think probably eight cabins, and we all shared a bathroom, but it had several shower cubicles and several toilet cubicles, so not, not all like one bathroom, but it wasn't en suite. Um, all the other ships I worked on, I'm just trying to think, am I right? Yes, all the other cabins that I had on all the other ships were single cabins and I had my own bathroom, which was lovely, an ensuite bathroom. Some were bigger than others. Um, my best cabin, I think, was probably on the Sky Princess. I had a really nice cabin. Uh, officers were up at the top, of, quite near the top on that cabin, uh, sorry, on that ship, and I had a porthole and that was really nice and it was quite a good size. Um, I liked that cabin but yeah I, I was very happy with my accommodation all the time on ship so I think I think I did quite well I think it's maybe not quite that nice nowadays. <laughs> Food that's another thing that people ask about Again, as an officer, I was really lucky we got to eat the same food as the passengers um, we depending on what ship I was in sometimes we had our own officers table in the passenger dining room we did that on Canberra and sometimes we had um we would eat in the officers wardrobe uh, um in the island princess just trying to think on the sky what we did you know I can't remember that's bizarre isn't it um but on the island princess we used to eat in the officers wardrobe which was um an officer's dining room and bar with a lovely deck outside with a couple of tables it was a really nice um officer's wardroom that were sort of relaxation area for us there we used to use that a lot it was really really nice and um, I've probably got photos up there which I'll include but yeah it was very nice we we always got to eat the passenger menu we could choose pretty much whatever we wanted off that but what I will say is that after three months or two months or, or a couple of months of eating passenger gourmet food every night all you crave is bloody beans on toast and when we'd had a particularly busy um no, not a particularly busy day but um one of the traditions on board ship is on turnaround day, which is what you call the day at the end of a cruise, which is the beginning of the next cruise, because you don't get a break between the two. Finance is king and you have to um, keep the money rolling in, so one cruise ends, another one starts. And that was always a very, very busy day for us in the purser's office. Um, with the end of one cruise and the beginning of another, it would be at least a 12 hour day, probably a little bit more. Um, and we used to go up to the officer's wardrobe after that and have what they called pub dinner. And the chef used to cook us things like shepherd's pie or a nice curry. or, or it, it was always something that we really, really looked forward to. Sausage and mash, something like that. Real proper, um, what felt like home-cooked food. Not messed about with plain good old English food, steak and kidney pie, all that sort of thing. We used to really look forward to our pub dinner on a turnaround day. 
One of the nice things about working on board ship is that you make friends really quickly. You're living and working with the same people. You become close really quickly. And you, it, we were all young. We were all excited about traveling the world, seeing all these places. And I've got some very, very happy memories of we used to have parties and I, I think they're far more stringent these days. There are a lot more rules in place around drinking and stuff. We, oh my goodness, we drank a lot. We really did. We had so much fun. The hangovers were vicious though. You didn't get a day off for a hangover in those days. Um, but yeah, we, we, the social life on board was absolutely brilliant. I know from people who are still there that it's not the same as it was back then. I think we um, were lucky to enjoy quite such an active social life on board as we did. It was great fun. And of course, a hotbed of romance between various different crew members. I'm not telling you about any of mine, so I'll leave that there. But um, yes, romance was involved on board. <laughs> Another question people are interested in is how much time we got to see the places that we're actually travelling to. And that would depend on various factors. It would depend on what job you were doing on board. Um, but also it would depend on whether you were doing, if you were doing regular cruising, for example, um, like seven day cruising out of Los Angeles, doing the same route every seven days, or um, same in Alaska, you used to go up and down from Vancouver seven days up to Whittier and then seven day cruise back from Whittier to Vancouver. So regular cruising, um, you would get more time off in port because there would be less paperwork every week. Um, you would know the routes, you would know the customs officer, you would know the immigration procedures and you get a relationship with the immigration officers that with all the passenger manifests and what have you every week. So it would become a lot easier in Times of in terms of plenty of time off. Um, however, when you were doing something like the World Cruise, where it was a different port every time, and quite often ports that you hadn't been to, um, quite often ports where they were, let's say, not as relaxed as others. For example, places in China in those days, in Russia as well. Um, it was quite early days after the Iron Curtain, you know being removed um, so there was very paperwork heavy there so that would make a lot more work for us uh, in the purser's office so um, although seven day regular cruising it sounds more boring than going to somewhere new every single week it did have its merits but overall I was really lucky I got to see a lot a lot of places but I will talk more about that in part two so I hope I've given you a flavour of um, life on board a ship. Um, if there's any questions or anything I haven't told you that you'd like to know, let me know in the comments and I'll try and answer any more questions. Um, I've really enjoyed this little reminiscence, so I hope you enjoyed it too. Please leave me a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And if you're not subscribed and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing and many more things that I do as well, beauty, fashion, holidays, lifestyle, all sorts of stuff, please do hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again on Friday. Bye-bye.